So today we have the LS3 Miata in the shop. No matter how many times I think we are done tinkering with this thing, there's always more to be done, especially in the middle of comp season, which we're in right now. We just had the first round of clutch kickers, which is the main series I'm competing in this year. And it is tough, man. There's really good drivers, competition, really good cars, really good everything. Every Everyone it shreds there. It is uh, a very tough competition. Car needs to be good. Car needs to be dialed, car needs to be reliable. You gotta be on your A game. Everything's gotta be up to snuff. So because of that, no matter how many times I think we'll just throw this thing in the trailer for next round, I always find some stuff I wanna do to it to uh, make it more reliable, make it faster, make it better, make it stronger, etc. So we have a good handful of things to knock out on this thing before the next round. Luckily, we've got some time so we can take our time getting it sorted, make sure we test it out, etc. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is trying to simplify a system. So I'm all about having as minimal failure points as possible. That's why the car is naturally aspirated, not supercharged, not turbo. That's why I ended up taking the power steering off. I went through multiple variations of power steering pump setups, electric, electric column, normal, had failures, decided, you know what, I'll deal with no power steering to eliminate that as a possible failure point. The goal is just to make the car as reliable as possible, priority number one. It being competitive and fast and all that is second to reliability. If your car breaks, doesn't matter how fast it is. Doesn't matter how good it would have been if it didn't break, it broke. And it broke on us last weekend, so I'm not taking any chances. So when I put this engine in, this is a 6.2 liter Gen 4 LS out of an 07 Escalade. The car originally had this engine in it, which is a 5.3 Gen 3 engine. Um, so the electronics are a little different. Because of that, I had to swap ECUs to a Holley Terminator X-Max. The X-Max allows you to do drive-by wire, and I've never tried it. So I figured, hey, why not? Might as well give it a shot. I've never tried it. It'll be a fun new thing to tinker with, try it out, see what the pros and cons are. So this past weekend, after we finally got a fuel system issue that we've been chasing sorted out, car was ripping better than ever, we started having a drive-by wire issue. We started getting a TPS error, then the throttle becomes useless, or if the car is not running when it happens, you can't start the car and you've got to reset it. And all of that kind of pushed me over the edge to switch this car back to drive-by cable. Now, drive-by wire is great and it's really cool, um, but for this car and its purposes, we don't really use any of the advantages. We don't use any sort of traction control, any sort of anti-lag, any sort of no-lift shift. I mean, really all we get out of it is better idle control. So I saved my whole drive-by cable system. The Holly can do both. It literally has the plugs already here for the idle air control and the TPS. So it should be easy enough to do some retuning and stuff like that. But there are things like the TPS on a drive-by cable system that can fail and cause you issues, but there's less of them. And I figure trade off less systems to fail versus the gains we get from drive-by wire. I think it's worth it to go back. That was a lot of jibber jabbering about it, but that is the first project we are gonna tackle today. Let's start tearing this thing apart. These new Milwaukee high-speed ratchets are the bee's knees, dude. At least that part's super easy. All right, so here's my old drive-by cable throttle body we're gonna be putting back in. I also got new OEM sensor, so OEM TPS sensor, OEM idle air control valve, and then a spare TPS sensor, and then we have this one, which was working. So. Just covering all the bases here, the TPS sensor, if that does fail, can cause some big problems, can prevent the car from running or make it run very poorly. So I wanna make sure we have that. Here's my drive-by cable pedal assembly. So I need to pull the old one out with the drive-by wire pedal and replace it with this one. And then another project we have to work on is rear control arms. So these are from Destroyer Die. All my suspension stuff's from them. So I have their drop knuckles, their front lowers, their front uppers, their rear uppers. The only thing stock left was the rear lower control arms. And they make these nice tubular ones that are also a little shorter to give us a little more positive camber adjustment range, which we need. So we've got a bushing kit for that. We also have a new front upper control arm because I bent my last one. So we've got a new one to replace that one, but still waiting on the bushings to get here. They should be here tomorrow. So for now, this is what we're working on. Should spice the car up a, uh, a decent bit. Host Manito has volunteered to do the uh, not fun part since he's smaller. Smaller hands can crawl under there and get to the bolts for the pedal assembly. All right, well, while Host Juanito is doing the crappy job, <laughs> I get to do the easy job of changing these sensors out and putting this throttle body on. Gotta love having good friends. He offered. Let it be known. I tried to do it. He offered. 
I was not gonna say no. And then two new OEM ones. I don't know if that one was OEM or not. That one's been cycled off several different throttle bodies. But TPS failures on LSs is, is, is a thing that happens. Just a little dirty. It's a little dirty. I already talked to Kevin at KSR. He's sending a new tune file with adjustments. Or we can, I mean. Oh, I'm going to Kate. It's a poor car. Look at that shiny new sensors. All right, go ahead and toss the throttle body on. Save our spare sensors. These will go in the trailer. I've been trying to, to up my spare spare parts game, so that way we don't get stranded at the track with nothing to fix the problem. Ideally, we won't have any problems, but you know how that goes. I gotta find two. I made a throttle cable bracket, and I don't think I used it on the RX-7. Part of the reason for doing drive by wire was like how much sleeker the other throttle body was. If she still shuts. Oh, yeah, we're good. All right, drive by cable throttle body installed. Going to either need to make a bracket or I gotta see if I can find my old one that I made last time. It would be nice to remake it because that one was one of my first TIG fab projects, but it really was a it worked, you know? Well, Swanito already got the pedal out and the pedal assembly. Look at that. We got to switch switch the rubber over because that one doesn't have any rubber, but you can see the, the bracket that I made here. So it goes like that. So you got the rib nuts. I was pretty proud of this little bracket. I whipped this up reasonably quick and then I had to weld this in because this is how the steering column mounts. It mounts to that stud. So I had to like grind a bolt down and you get the idea. So I'll save this. Maybe one day in a future far, far away, I'll want to go back to this, but I kind of doubt it. Kind of doubt it. So anyway, now we just need to get this one in. It's a little labor intensive. I mean, it's not that bad. We just had to pull the steering shaft down some, pull the Holly digital dash out, and then some trim. Overall, not terrible. All right, I had to dig through several totes, but I found the OG bracket. Not the nicest thing in the world, but it works. This is the stock Miata like deal that goes on the rubber here. And then it bolts here. I mean, I took my time when I built this. I was proud of it. I didn't want to rebuild it. Cause you know, I don't think I can make it any better than Taylor four years ago, three years ago, however many years ago, a lot of years ago. Okay, well, so far it looks like it's fitting. We're gonna have to lift this line up some. Look at that, like it never happened. The funny thing is I had all the stuff to convert this car back to drive-by cable in the trailer in case I ever had a failure with the drive-by wire, but I didn't have the bracket. So like how was, <laughs> like it would have been useless. We would have like swapped this at the track last minute and then been like, oh wait, just kidding. Turns out we made it the right length. Might as well straighten this one up, so. Look at that. Perfect arch. That's straight. Now it's almost the right length. All right, Josue, can you press the throttle all the way? Just make sure it's gonna articulate fully. Not quite, but it's close. Yeah, I mean, it's most of the way there. It's going to like 80, 90%. All right, uh, all the drive-by cable stuff is done. Pedal assembly's back in, cable's hooked up, cable mount. Waiting for Kevin to send me a different tune to work with the drive-by cable. I sent him the tune that was on here and some data logs, so if he wants to make any changes. So waiting on that. While we wait on that, we're gonna move on to the suspension stuff. So first thing I wanna do is try to get this front control arm off. I wanna make sure we can get it out because there's a long bolt that's really annoying to get out. And the last time I bent one of these, it was a stock arm and I, I had to cut the bolt out. So I need to know if I need a bolt, you get the idea. So oh, he has gotta leave soon, so I'll have a second set of hands and I knock it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, well, it was as much of a challenge as we expected, but we got it. We got the bolt out. The bolt's not bent, surprisingly, so that's good. The difficult part is the bolt has to slide out through this bracket, but I think over time these brackets get a little bent and the bolt hits like what's essentially the nut for the sway bar to bolt onto. So we had to pry it all sorts of ways, hammer it from the backside, but we got it. All right, got the front control arm off. This poor car, man. This thing has seen some abuse. We got mud covering up our freaking drive sump pump and pretty much everything else in the suspension. This car takes a look in and keeps on ticking, that is for sure. I do think both my inner tie rods are a little bent too, so I'll probably replace those while we have everything apart. I'll show you the uh, bent arm out of the car. You can kind of see better how bent it is. Bam! It's so crazy to me. I'm still mind blown that I bent that, considering all the other stuff it's seen, all the other hard hits and tire drops and, and everything. The fact that I was able to bend it is shocking to me. I think it just had to be the wheel catching it, digging in and bending it up. That's, that's the only thing that makes sense considering the hits it's taken otherwise that have done absolutely nothing. And I mean, at the end of the day, everything in the front suspension is super stout. Like the lower control arm is like inch thick steel and the subframe's really stout and the knuckles are really stout. So there's gotta be something to give when everything goes wrong. You know, like we get in a big crash, something's gonna bend and I think it would be the upper arm which would be ideal because that'd be the easiest one to replace. So we've got our new one here. They did make a couple of revisions to it. You can see just some other minor differences. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get another one, replace the front driver's side, even though that one's fine. But then we'll have two fresh upper arms and we'll have that one as a spare. The main thing I want to tackle real quick is Kevin did send me the new tune file for the Miata with drive-by cable. So I want to get that tune on and just see, make sure it starts and idles and all that. So we can kind of check that box off for now and can uh, focus on the suspension. <laughs> I think we've got the idle set pretty good. Free revved it, everything seems good. Uh, obviously we won't know for sure until we drive it. Kevin did make a little bit of changes to the tune after seeing some of the drifting data logs. As I kind of suspected, there's just some spots like that we get to in drifting that you wouldn't really get to at any other time where it's like 30% throttle, but 6,000 RPM, you know, like high up in the RPM range, quarter throttle or whatever, especially with not super grippy tires on, um, cause you're just kind of pedaling it a lot depending on the track and yada yada. So anyway, sweet. I'm glad it runs good. Everything seems good. So until we get the suspension back together, we're done and dusted with the uh, throttle body change. I'm glad to have that done. I'm glad to have one less system to fail. Uh, it just makes me feel better. Eases my mind, soothes, soothes the heart. <laughs> So anyway, I want to do another thing on the suspension. Let me show you. Let me lift it up and I'll show you what I want to do. All right, so right now, if we turn all the way to lock, ignore that because it doesn't hit when the car's on the ground, we hit our sway bar and it basically stops this wheel and it's almost like you're hitting the brake. And if it's under a lot of load, that wheel can turn further and that's when it rubs on the control arm. So we got these by sevens temporarily and we're gonna put by eights on which I got but I've got an idea I might try to keep running the sevens because the 205 is not like ballooned on there we're gonna take the wheel off let me show you what we're gonna try to do so with our destroyer die arms we have camber adjustment up top and camber adjustment down here at each ball joint so right now I have 
everything all the way in. That gets me about five degrees, four to five degrees of camber, which is about right. Keeps everything, keeps the wheel as far in as possible. Because when I ran the by eight, this with the spacer would be poking a little bit past the fender. But with the by seven, we're almost inside the fender. So what I'm thinking is I extend the top and the bottom all the way. That'll bring the wheel out about an inch and a half, maybe two inches should give us all the clearance in the world on the inside and we shouldn't be poking a whole lot more than we were with the eight. That's the theory at least. Let's uh, pull it all out and try. Well, we're gonna have to recenter our rack um, because one, this pushing out is gonna essentially tow it way in. We'll have to tow it back out. Two, we took the steering column out when we were doing the pedal. Three, I need to change the tie rod, so basically resetting all the front suspension, which is okay. It needs a good thorough alignment. I'm gonna add some camber. Pull the wheel back off, add a little camber. I had never worked on this car and I had to do all this. He told me like all the stuff that needed to be done. I'd be like, man, that's a lot of work. But having taken this car apart and back together so many times, it's like, I don't know, it's just easy because I know how it all comes apart. I mean, it's still work tearing apart the whole suspension, but it's just funny when you have a, a car that you track, you start to get used to how, how everything has to get done. It's about right. It could honestly use a little more. Yeah, see, we're still hitting the sway bar. Granted, the rack might limit before then because the rack is going to be offset this way. So we'll have more turn that way. Yeah, see? Because this is full lock this way. But I mean, that's about where we were with the eights. And now we've got more clearance. So I think I'm going to stick with that. Put the new tires on these sevens and let it ride. All right, well, our front bushing kit came in so we can start assembling that control arm. I did fiddle with the extended track width a little more. Kind of got the camber where I wanted it, but I wasn't sure if the tie rods are going to be long enough and they're not. We've only got uh, five to 10 mil of threads in there. Clearly not enough, uh, especially when I'm door tapping people. So what we're gonna do is bring it in one notch. So we have three notches. We were all the way in before. We're gonna go to the middle. That'll still extend it a decent bit. Kind of see how that goes. And if it seems like a drastic change, if we're getting more angle and just rubbing a little bit, you know, maybe I'll build some extended tie rods. I just, if I do that, if I go that route, I wanna build a spare set too. So I don't, I don't wanna open that can of worms just yet. I just wanna try it a little bit extended and see where we're at. So we gotta bring that in and off, but we gotta build that other control arm, get it on, get the front suspension on, put new tie rods in. We gotta finish up this front suspension more or less. So uh, I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering about it and uh, get to work. See if we can't get these in without the press. All right, well, that went pretty smoothly in the grand scheme of things. Hands are all gooey now, but not too bad. Now we're hitting that same spot. Expected. I think it's only a real big problem to get this out when the control arm's bent because that one was tweaked. All right, front suspension back together, back complete like it never 
happen. Now we just gotta do the inner tie rods. So I'll knock that out real quick and then we'll move on to the rear stuff we need to handle. All right, well, it turns out my spare tie rods are not the right size. I mean, I guess it's a good thing I figured it out now. The ones on there are just slightly bent. So we'll run them for this event and I'll try to figure out why I have the wrong size ones and get the right size ones to replace them. Uh, so we got the bushings in the rear arms. Oh, these look so snazzy with the bushings in them. It's gonna look so much cooler at the back of the car because you can see the control arm because of the bash bar. So now you're gonna be able to see these nice pretty control arms, not the ugly OEM ones. And then we'll have the OEM ones as spares. Remember that whole stacking up my spare game? So yeah, we need to start getting these on once I finish up with the tie rods. All right, another problem we need to tackle is my rear dip bushings, one of them fell out. Either clutch kickers or OSW. So what I'm gonna do is make like a little solid bushing to go in here, drill some holes in it, boom, boom, and then we'll remount it solid. It's pretty much solid right now, even though that sleeve has a bushing in it, just because of the direction it's mounted. So Josue's tearing apart the control arms while I am gonna weld the solid bushing thing. So I've got this one by one aluminum box that I cut to the right length. I just need the height of two of them, so I'm just gonna weld two together. It obviously doesn't need to be very strong, the weld that is just to make it easier to drill them. So I might as well weld it for fun. kind of tricky because it just kept bouncing around the whole time but it was 180 amps I never ran this welder that high not yet all right well that's definitely gonna have to cool down a little bit put a lot of heat into that all right well host Juanito on the hustle bus got the uh, old control arms off I have their upper arms as well which this is the best design for a Miata upper arm it's got an eccentric at the knuckle so instead of having some stupid heim joint you got to take off and whatever you just turn the eccentric at the knuckle and it brings the top in or out, camber, less or more. But anyway, you can see I've got this one maxed out and still wanted to pull a little more camber out. So this will get us better into the adjustment range we want. We don't really want any negative camber ever, or rarely. Tripping away, the funny thing is I don't have any good tires right now. Tires are all on the way, but I killed all my tires at the last event and my fronts are dead. So I gotta uh, scramble some stuff together for the test drive so we have some traction to test out the drive-by cable. But uh, one thing at a time. We're all like positive now. Real positive. Hopefully we can go short enough. <laughs> well, I mean, these are... Oh, yeah. Still, yeah. Yeah, I definitely need to redesign this at some point. Did you, is that a kit? Or yeah. Did you make it yourself? Oh, I made all this. Well, I didn't make this. All right, rear suspension is completely back together. Control arms are in, new diff bushing, whack of bushing mount is in. Front's back together. The uh, inner tie rods, the old ones are back in. We are checking angle. It looks like we're gonna clear the sway bar now if we run the by sevens and they don't poke too much. So I just basically need to recenter the rack. We need to align the whole car. All right, we got the car back on the ground. We aligned it. We put about an eighth inch toe out in the front. I think we've got things centered in the rear. I have the camber set all the way negative at the top and we're still pretty positive. I've got to see where it is when it settles out. But for my arm combination, that, that lower might be, the lower is meant to be shorter to take out negative camber. 
but it might be too short with mixed with the adjustable upper. I don't know. It mixed with how much tail I want to run. But again, I got to drive it, let the suspension settle down the ride height and then recheck the alignment. But we're about to go drive it. I got to do a cold start data log for Kevin and then uh, go take it for a rip and see if the drive-by cable tune-up is all good. 